a person whose mass is 65 kilograms is in an elevator descending at 10 meters per second. The elevator takes 3.5 seconds to break to a stop at the first floor. Part A. What is the person's apparent weight before the elevator starts breaking? So from what's given, we know that the elevator is going downwards at 10 meters per second and acceleration is equal to zero. We could consider this to be in dynamic equilibrium. We have that the man feels the force of gravity, mg, and he also feels the normal force because he is supported by the elevator's floor. Then there exists a normal force that prevents him from falling through the floor. That is also called the support force and also the apparent weight. Let me reduce the man to a free body diagram and we can see that normal force is going upwards, mg is going downwards, but the net force is equal to zero. That means the summation of the forces in the y direction is equal to fn going up minus mg going down. Since we are in static equilibrium, the summation of the forces in the y direction is also equal to zero. That means that fn minus mg is equal to zero. If we solve for fn, we get that fn is equal to mg. From the information given, m is 65 kilograms, and we know that on Earth, at sea level, gravity is 9.8 meters per second square. We compute this information and we get that the apparent weight of this man is equal to 637 newtons. The answer is given as 640 newtons because of the number of significant figures that were asked, but 637 newtons is more precise. So for part B, what's the man's apparent weight while the elevator is breaking? In this case, before braking, the velocity was constant, but in the moment when braking starts, velocity is not constant anymore. So that's why 10 meters per second is our initial velocity. Final velocity is going to be 0 meters per second because the elevator is going to get to a complete stop. The time that it takes the elevator to stop is 3.5 seconds, as it was given. From this information, we can calculate the average acceleration. It is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. We have that our final velocity is 0 meters per second minus initial velocity, that's negative 10 meters per second. We assume negative because we're going downwards. Final time is 3.5 seconds minus 0 seconds, that's the initial time when the experiment started. After computing these numbers, we get that the average acceleration is 2.857 meters per second square. This acceleration is going upwards in the direction of the net force and opposite to the initial velocity that is going downwards. The mg force on the man is still the same, but the normal force has to be higher because the normal force is on balance force is changing the man's velocity in the upward direction that's opposite to the initial velocity in the process when the elevator is stopping. We know that the summation of the forces in the y direction is fn going upwards minus mg going downwards. But for this case, there is an unbalanced force that's changing the velocity of the man. So the summation of the forces in the y direction is equal to mass times acceleration. I draw the acceleration and the velocity arrows out of the free body diagram because remember that the free body diagram is only for forces. So the acceleration and velocity are drawn just for like a reference. So we have that Fn minus mg is equal to mass times acceleration. If I add mg to both sides, we get that Fn is equal to ma plus mg. Then let's factor the mass, we get that Fn is equal to mass times A plus G. And when we compute the numbers, we get that Fn 
is equal to 823 newtons. This is the apparent weight of the man when the elevator starts breaking. The answer was 820 again because of the number of significant figures that the problem is asking. But we know that 823 newtons is more precise. Now, as a comparison, when the elevator and the man are descending with a constant velocity of 10 meters per second in dynamic equilibrium, the normal force or apparent weight is 637 newtons. This is the same as if he was standing on the floor anywhere. But when the elevator starts breaking, there is an acceleration and there is a net force going upwards that's changing the man's velocity. So he feels heavier and you can do this experiment by yourself. Next time you use an elevator and you're going downwards, close your eyes and try to feel what happened when the elevator starts breaking. This is something that's possible to feel with our bodies in our daily life. Okay guys, I hope that this explanation was useful. I'll see you in the next video. Please remember to like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, share it with your friends, your geek friends, your girlfriend, and keep it going guys. I'll see you in the next video.